Hey everybody, this is Furch. Um, so I, I went ahead and watched two episodes of The Acolyte. And look, there's a lot of videos already talking about this and a lot of people doing commentary. And you know what's interesting is I, I haven't seen that many serious either articles or videos uh, praising this show. I've seen a couple like what I wouldn't call serious. I mean, you know, articles that are like, this is a good show and here's why. Or I'm excited for the next episode. Or what's really common in what you get in a lot of streaming shows is... Uh, to catch you up on what happened, you know, here's what happened and what's going to happen next. We're very excited to find out. You you see those things for even stupid things like reality TV. You'll see, uh, you know, you'll see articles like in a penultimate episode of Survivor, which is on season 183. Uh, you know, they, there's it's down to now three people. One of them is a tricky bastard. I'm not sure what's going to happen. Like, but we'll find out next Wednesday. And you get people kind of excited about it. Hell, Shield had articles like that the the tv show um so i mean it it's possible and you, the bar doesn't have to be that high to get that kind of interest but i'm not seeing anything like that for the acolyte honestly now maybe it's not out there and i just haven't searched hard enough but i've done a legitimately you know attempted good job which in most cases is i put in the acolyte into a google and then i search news i click on the little news tab and you might say, well, that's not a really great job of searching. Yeah, except that works for everything else. That worked for She-Hole, for example. Uh, but I see a lot of people uh, shitting all over the show. And I see a handful of people saying it's really good. because And, and the people who are shitting on it are racist. I mean, I, there's those articles. But nobody's really explaining why it's really good. And, and maybe the reason is it's not good. Um, but... You know, I think there's one major problem that this show reveals, and it's not its not what I, I haven't heard people comment on this either. Um, I, it's just two major problems. In fairness, one people have commented on, which is it's dumb. It's its just dumb. Um, the, the plot is dumb. The, again, I've seen two episodes. You know, the rumor is, if you can believe the Internet, that the third episode is the one that really goes in some crazy ass directions with Immaculate Conception. And I thought. We all thought Anakin was supposed to be the first one for this to happen, but I guess he's not now, which actually plays into this, the second and, in my mind, bigger problem this whole show has. But we'll get to that in a second. Believe that, as they say. Um, but anyway, it, it's just dumb. Like, the, the plot points, like, you, you shouldn't sit watching the show and go, well, why would they do that? It's like, I mean, unless you're watching a comedy, like you're watching scary movie from the, what, the 90s? Unless you're watching something like that and they're making fun of horror movies, or unless it's a horror movie, it's derib deliberately trying to be campy, like, uh, you know, the, the people are the, the, the horny teenagers getting picked off one by one, so they decide to all split up and they don't turn the lights on when they wander around the sneaky old house. Like, that kind of, that's the level of, of stupid that you have in this show. There's just stupid ass things that go on. And, and it takes you away from whatever's trying to go on. By the way, the stupid ass things have nothing to do with the uh, race, gender, ethnicity, LGBTQ rights, none of that. It's 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 like, you know, why would the you know, why would the why why is this Jedi hanging out, uh, meditating for forever? Like why why is that? Why why is the you know, if this person's a badass, why is the assassination tip so shitty? Why like there's parts of this that you, you just ask, like what what is even going on here? Nobody feels either threatening or inspiring because everything feels stupid. And I think that's a major problem. But the, the, the bigger problem in my mind is a, a problem for Star Wars in general. And I, I, I'm curious if, if many of you are with me on this, but let me try and plead my case and see, see who's there. Uh, in my mind, the continuity is, a, is an interesting double-edged sword. I like it, um, especially in comics. I mean, you know, Chris Claremont, you know, doing a subplot that he comes back to two years later. I appreciate it. And I also like that when you have really tight continuity and it's like, hey, this person is, you know, afraid of water. And then 100 issues later, you know, the, the characters find themselves with water and it's like, oh, my God, my fear. And it's like, oh, shit, we haven't we haven't thought about that or heard about that in like 10 years. And now suddenly it's brought back up again. You know, somebody who's really good, I think, with continuity was Kirkman, both in Walking Dead and with Invincible. Both those those comics would lay things out and then come back to them a long time ago. Um, and this boiled down also to the art, which isn't what I'm exactly talking about right here. But, you know, a, a poster that's in a room that uh, we see 
And when they come back to it, like 20 issues later, posters still there. Like it, it's like these things, you know, there, there's just a sense of wanting to keep this universe more or less stable. And I think that's, that's a, it's a good thing. It's a hard thing to do. I don't think it's astronomically hard to do, but it does require people care. And, and the, unfortunately people caring is kind of a hard thing to pull off these days, it seems. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's kind of what you have. Um, and, and so, you know, if you're going to do continuity, you know, you, you can't retcon it too much. I think using the comic book example, again, we've seen continuity where they've dicked around with it many, many times. And it's like, you know, punching holes in the side of a ship. Eventually the ship sinks. You know, you more or less need to stick with what you got, or you need to make logical, sensible changes, but you can't just randomly say, you know, I feel like doing something else today because you destroy the, the continuity that you're trying to establish. And so that, that tends to be a problem over time. Uh, so one of the benefits in my mind to Star Wars is that there wasn't that much continuity. And uh, work with me on this. If you're thinking about what's going to appeal to normies and you want to be caught up on the Star Wars universe, um, for a long time, you had to watch three movies. That's it. Three, six hours, then change. And you were done. You more or less were there. If, if you're like, oh, man, I love Star Wars. It's my favorite movie. Oh, I've never watched Star Wars before. Oh, let's let's get you caught up so we can have conversations together and talk about how much we love Star Wars. Six and a half hours later, you're done. You're now on the same page. You can go. You can, I mean, you could throw in the Christmas special there if you really feel like it. But there was no need to really do more than that, even though there were other things. There's that droids cartoon. Um, there was, uh, there was other Star Wars shit out there. There's certainly a lot of expanded universe books you could go in and read, but uh, full disclosure, I didn't read a lot of those books. Um, uh, I didn't want to, I didn't want to know about like, you know, there's a Jedi temple on planet four, five, seven, eight, and there they discovered a new way of making space mine salt. And that revealed that Han Solo had a third cousin that used to be an ambassador to the Tauntauns. And I mean, like, I, I just, I, I didn't read a lot of that because I didn't want to, and I, I didn't need to. You didn't need to get involved in this continuity. It was, the, the movies were fairly simple. Then it came around to the prequel trilogy, and it, it added new shit to the whole mix. It, some of it doesn't make sense. Like, hey, if Anakin built C-3PO, why is it he doesn't remember him later when he sees C-3PO? It's like, well, you know, all the robots look the same because you're racist, uh, but you know, it, like it, it just kind of muddied the water. Oh, there's mitochlorians now. And I mean, and if you remember going to see those, uh, those movies, the old, you know, mitochlorian bullshit was not well received. People didn't want that. They didn't want this scientific or whatever the hell it was explanation to the force. They were just kind of more or less happy with, you know, here's, here's some, here's the force and it's mysterious. It acts in mysterious and powerful ways. Cool. We're good. And that works. But what's happened is over, especially since Disney got their hands on it, we got three more movies and we got a bunch of shows and then we got a bunch of, you know, let's figure out what actually happened to Boba Fett. And then here's the Mandalorian over here. And here's that race. Let's delve into that. And now we got some new shit with Obi-Wan and then now the Acolyte. And oh, by the way, you now do need to go back and watch Rebels and and all this other horse shit. And, and it just the problem is the show has become something that is a turnoff to a lot of people. It's overly dense. It's complicated. There's a lot in there. It's got, uh, it, it, it's, it's now suddenly there is a heavy continuity to deal with, which means it's, it's different than it used to be. You know, you didn't have to read the expanded universe books. You didn't have to read the comics. You didn't have to know there's a green bunny looking character that was running around in the comics back in the seventies. It was okay. You know, you could still enjoy it just fine. And then suddenly the continuity got important where you actually did have to give a shit about it because otherwise, you know, how do these shows interconnect? Like, what, what's going on? Why is uh, Kylo Ren is, is where now? Snoke? What? And then, then on top of that, you kind of double, you had a bad mistake. You made something convoluted. And by the way, I'm sure there's some people out there who love it. You know, they'll love all the extra details or continuity nuts. They love, they love this stuff. Now suddenly they can win it. Whatever the hell trivia question. I mean, I had Trivial Pursuit Star Wars edition when I was younger. And I think at that point it was the original films and it was the the prequel trilogy. And that was it. And you could more or less, you know, answer the questions relatively okay and figure things out. Can you imagine the fucking nightmare that that thing would be now? Because the other problem is they, they took, they overly dumped in um, details that, that made it difficult to parse. 
And then they started changing those details. So, you know, these are this is a bad mistake followed by a worse mistake of, hey, we're going to make it really complicated. Hey, we're going to change what you know somewhat randomly. Oh, Anakin's the uh, Immaculate Conception kind of Jedi we haven't seen before. Cool. Here's another one, which which apparently is is going out of the Acolyte. Here's, uh, you know, Jedis can be fat now. Jedis can, I mean, this it's it's all over the place. And so you had you had things that were stated like, you know, this is how the Jedi, Jedi has to be pure of mind and spirit and body. OK, now nah, Jedis can, uh, you know, listen to punk rock and and, uh, you know, eat donuts all day. Like it, it just wait, what are we supposed to be remembering? And so it sucks if you go with heavy continuity and then you immediately turn around and go, yeah, but that continuity matters at different times when we feel like it. That's a, a, a mistake on top of a mistake. And that's fundamentally, I think, in my mind, the problem with Star Wars. So now you're left with something that's not easy to digest, that's uh, overly convoluted, and it, you know, and, and the overly convoluted things you need to remember also vary from show to show and have different meanings and different things. And, and to me, this blows up what is what was the, the appeal to Star Wars is relatively easy to step into. It was uh, you could wrap your head around it and it's good. And now it's like now you're going to have to study. And that just it, it, nobody it, it, it's not appealing. It is a little bit, you know, the difference between, say, the Star Wars universe and the, you know, the Babylon 5 universe or to some extent Star Trek. One of the reasons Star Wars was more appealing to the masses, to the normies, to the kids was because it was uh, it was easy to get, you know, you didn't have to invest a lot of time into it, and it's and it worked. And now it is uh, it's it's very difficult to understand. Um, you could I mean you, that you, you could still do it. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to, to do it, but it's it's not fun. And I think that's a big problem that the show has. To me, that's the the biggest problem the show has is they've they made it overly complicated, and then they've contradicted their own complications. So problem, and then another problem. That's my take on it anyway. Uh, there's plenty of other problems, by the way, but that's a big one. Anyway, there you have it. So what do you think about all this? Uh, does this have merit? Uh, let me know in the comments. Oh, by the way, one thing that I, I am sick of hearing, though, is people are like, oh, what would George Lucas think of this? George Lucas would think, hey, I got $100 million, bitch, and they pay me every year to basically do nothing. And uh, fuck you. That's what he thinks. That, that's it. George Lucas is not sitting in a lonely mansion somewhere going, if only I had not sold my baby, I would be able to have a more uh, more appealing show that would entertain the masses and speak more to the true heart of the fan. No, no, George Lucas is rich and he's, he's just fine. Trust me. Anyway, thanks for listening.